So Satan's wife is much more dangerous. Much more dangerous. Um, the uh, one of the one of the Chachamim, I forget the name now, I just heard it just the other day for the third time I still remember it. Uh, one of the Chachamim uh, said that uh, in one of his uh, how do I explain this? Uh, one of his wars in a mystical world, don't ask me to explain that part, uh, one of his wars in a mystical world, when he faced the satan, he was able to beat him instantly. Uh, he had no problem beating him, but when it came to his wife, he almost uh, couldn't handle it. Uh, to explain to us, nothings, that she is stronger than him, to the extent that he, the Satan himself is submissive to her. He is submissive to her. Uh, in fact, Hashem instilled uh, power in the woman uh, that really the whole world is submissive to them. Uh, the women have a certain power within them that they can get certain things uh, done in the world that men cannot. In fact, they could submit mostly any man. Uh, you know, it's 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 a uh, it's not a uh, coincidence. It's rather a power that Hashem instilled into the world, uh, and the same even in the spiritual. Whatever happens here happens over there. So even the Satan, according to uh, some of the sages' teachings and more of the mystical aspects of the Torah, Satan is submissive to her. Who is she originally? One of the teachings says that she was the original Chava. She was the original wife of Adam Arishon. She was the first wife that he had. She did not want to be with him. She left him to go with the Satan. And uh, Hashem gave Adam Arishon Chava that we know, which is not his first wife. Not his first wife. Not his first wife. Again, this goes into uh, higher education type of teachings. <laughs> But uh, the point being is that she's submissive to him. Uh, she, he is submissive to her. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, reasons is because she um, breeds. She breeds the soldiers from the sins. Every time a man sins, that sin, that seed goes into her. Goes into her and that breeds all types of soldiers or... There are different names for them too uh, that come into the world and in essence serve her, him, and so on. So she is the, uh, you know, the queen bee, if you will, that 500 bees serve. Uh, only in this case, it's uh, much larger numbers. Uh, and everyone's scared of her because, again, it's everyone's willing to die for her, everyone's willing to fight for her, and so on and so forth, including the, the king himself, which is the Satan. You know, so uh, she's much more powerful. Uh, but that's also why the, uh, her, she is so powerful that uh, the only name that I know that she has, you're not allowed to say. Whereas he has a name that you're not allowed to say that starts with an S. Uh, but he has other names that are descriptions of him or aspects of him that you're allowed to say, like Satan or Yetzirah or Malach Hamavit. Those are his names, but they're not really the name that you're allowed to say those names. There is a name that he has that you shouldn't say. Uh, but with her, it's not that you shouldn't say. You're not allowed to say. Why? It's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Point being is that this is uh, high, high, high stuff. Not even, I, I don't really know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> I, but it's just a, uh, don't, don't, uh, um, don't uh, think that I know. It's just, this is, this is what I know, everything I just taught you. But again, it's a, uh, I, I think that a lot of the mystical teachings are very, very interesting, and they actually fill in the gaps in a lot of other teachings. But a person needs to uh, also um, not focus on it too much, uh, simply because, uh, number one, it takes your time, and number two, it could take you to Never Never Land, uh, and uh, get you to a point where you're living in that never-never land and forgetting the basics. 
I have a few people that I know that are addicted to this stuff and they don't even know how to keep Shabbat. You understand? So, so that's the thing. So yeah, it's extremely interesting. Your question is fantastic. Continue asking those types of questions. But again, beyond this stuff, don't like, don't go into like YouTube and start looking up this stuff and like, oh, I want to hear a whole shear about the Satan's wife. Or like some people want to hear about like specific unique creatures within the, uh, uh, you know, the Tanakh and the whole shear just about it. The reason why I say is number one, it won't help you in your life. Number two, most of the teachings that's available about it on the internet is coming from non-valid sources, Christians, idol worshippers, and the likes. And three, come on now. Focus on what you have to do. Focus on how you have to do it. Focus on the things you need to do. And you know, and, uh, you know, it's it's interesting, but keep it to uh, under control. Uh, that's my recommendation. You don't want to listen. How about you want to go? Learn about reptilian people and uh, and uh, a, an animal that was half man, half human, and that was connected to the ground. With the, you, you want to go learn about that stuff? The Chabad, go enjoy. But it's not going to help you in your life. I know about it because it came through the studies and Midrashim and so on. But I promise you, I never watched an entire show about uh, reptilian people or uh, or uh, mystical creatures. You know, five minutes, ten minutes here and there. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, is not a big deal. But when you start uh, uh, having an obsession with it, and I see some people, uh, you know, uh, have an obsession with the Nephilim, the giants of the Torah, and they are they get to a point where they're willing to watch anything that anyone ever said about it, even if the source is not valid. So what ends up happening is that their whole brain is full of junk. Some of it is true, so it sounds like they know what they're talking about. Some of it is completely idol idolatry or, or heretical. Some of it is just complete, you know, fabrication that somebody made. So, uh, the, the whole world is, is, is just stupid. It's just stupid. So, you know, again, it's, you have to contain. Contain your little bit of different things is not a problem. But, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that's not useful in your day-to-day -day life is not healthy. Not healthy for your neshama. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the shiurim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat